Hey guys, welcome back to Math Principles. One of the things that I noticed last time we were having trouble with were the compound inequalities. Stuff where we had kind of three sides to the inequality, or maybe we saw this word or. On problems like that, I saw that we were having some difficulty. So I want to take a look at those. Now these are what are called compound inequalities because it's two or more inequalities put together. If we had looked at ones in the past, there were just like negative three is less than or equal to x minus two. Well, now we're saying negative three is less than or equal to x minus two, which is less than four. We're adding a little bit more to it. This is what's called an and inequality, okay? There are two parts of this inequality pushed together and we need to satisfy the whole thing all at once, okay? Both halves of that inequality must be true at the same time. So we solve the whole thing all at once. Now, when we had an inequality like this one, we would add two to both sides. Well, now when we look at this, we have three sides. So we're gonna add that two to all three sides. We're gonna do the same kind of thing, but we have three sides of the inequality to work with. Now, when we go to graph, there's two parts to the solution. We're gonna graph each half of the inequality very, very lightly and then darken where they overlap because both halves of that inequality must be true. So our solution is the part of the graph where both of those graphs overlap. The or inequalities. With an or inequality, this has to be true or this has to be true. So we just solve each half separately and we graph both halves, both solutions on the same number line. And that's our solution set, okay? So let's take a look at this one. From the top, same thing we always do, vertical line. Now this time, because there's two inequalities, we're gonna draw two vertical lines. Okay, now I wanna get that X all the way by itself. They're subtracting two, so we'll add two to all three sides of this inequality. Okay, in the middle, minus two plus two cancels, and X is all by itself. On the left side, negative three plus two is negative one. On the right side, four plus two gives me six. So I have negative one is less than or equal to x, which is less than six. And there's our solution. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna graph both halves of this inequality very, very lightly and darken where they overlap. So I'll start with my number line. I'll put a little tick mark for zero near the middle. Now negative one is over here on the left. And at negative one, I have negative one is less than or equal to x. Now less than or equal to means we wanna have a closed circle. Okay, now this inequality opens to x, which means I want the big values. I wanna have the, the big numbers, and the big numbers are over here on the right. So very, very lightly, I'm gonna shade over here to the right. Now, that's the first half. Then I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna graph the second half x is less than six. So I'll come over to the number line, put a tick mark where six is. Now I just have x is less than six, which means I'm going to have an open circle on six. And this inequality points to x, so I want the small values of x, small values are over on the left. So real lightly, I'm gonna shade over to the left. Now, what I want for my graph is the place where these two overlap. And they overlap from this one to this six. Okay, open circle on the six, close circle on the one, and shade between them, okay? And this is your solution set, this area in the middle that's shaded for both of them. Okay, now number two, we have an or inequality. And with an or inequality, they don't need to be satisfied at the same time. So we're not gonna worry about an overlap, we're just gonna solve one, solve the other, and put both solutions on the same graph. So I have four y minus two is greater than or equal to 14, vertical line, add two to both sides, have four y is greater than or equal to 16, divide both sides by four, and have y is greater than or equal to four. Then over here on the right side, on the second inequality, same thing, vertical line, y is being multiplied by three and then subtracted by four, 
So we'll add 4 to both sides. And negative 4 plus 4 gives me 0. So I have 3y minus 0, or simply 3y, is less than or equal to negative 13 plus 4 is negative 9. Okay, now I want y all the way by itself, so we'll divide both sides by 3. And I'll have y is less than or equal to negative 3. Now, this is my solution right here. I'm going to graph this on the number line. So number line, 0 near the center. I'll start with this one. I'll put a little tick mark here where I think 4 will be. Now they have greater than or equal to, which means we're going to use a closed circle on that 4. And the inequality opens to y, so I want the big values of y. Those are over here on the right. Okay, then I'll graph this one. y is less than or equal to negative 3. So negative 3 somewhere over here. Less than or equal to means a closed circle on that 3. And this inequality points to y, which means I'm going to shade to the left. So, with an AND inequality, they both have to be true. So we shade the area of the graph where our solutions overlap. But with an OR inequality, they do not both have to be true. One or the other can be true. So we just put both graphs on the same number line. Okay, let's take a look at a couple more. This one's an AND. Okay, I have those two inequalities pushed together. Okay, so the first thing that we'll do after those lines, we'll subtract 1 from all three sides. Negative 5 minus 1 is negative 6. 1 minus 1 is 0, so I have 0 minus 2x, or negative 2x, is less than 7 minus 1 is 6. Now it's still being multiplied by negative 2, so we'll divide all three sides by negative 2. On the left side, negative 6 divided by negative 2 is positive 3. In the middle, negative 2x divided by negative 2 is positive 1x, or simply x. And then on the right, 6 minus 2 is 4. But the catch is we divided all three sides by a negative. So we need to reverse those inequalities. So we have 3 is greater than x is greater than 4. Hold on one second. Ah, yes. When we divide it by a negative, this 4 should also be negative. Sorry about that. Okay, now, we have our solution. We'd like to graph it. So we'll set up the number line. Put 0 somewhere near the center. And we graph each half very lightly and darken where they overlap. So I'm going to start with the 3 is greater than x half. So I'll put 3 over here, and it's just greater than, not greater than or equal to, so I use an open circle on that 3. Now, this inequality points to x, which means I want the small values of x. Small values of x are over here on the left. So I'll shade this way very, very lightly. Then we'll do the same thing for the x is greater than negative 4. Negative 4 is over here. Just greater than, not greater than or equal to, means an open circle. And that inequality opens to x. So we want the big values of x. Big values of x go to the right. So I have these two inequalities. I have them graphed lightly. I want to darken where they overlap. They overlap between 4 and 3. But they do not include 4 or 3. It has to be part of both inequalities. And since this is an open circle, it's not included in the x is greater than negative 4. Since this is an open circle, it's not included in the x is greater than, excuse me, 3 is greater than x. So since it's not included in both of them, it's not going to be part of the overlap. It's not going to be part of our solution. So we wouldn't shade in those circles, we would leave those open. 
Okay, last one here, another or. Okay, we're gonna start out the same way. Vertical lines. Now, I wanna isolate that x. So, x is being multiplied by two, and then they're subtracting one. So we'll add one to both sides. Negative one plus one is zero. So I have just two x is less than three plus one, gives us four. Divide both sides by two, and we get x is less than two. Now we're gonna solve the other one. A vertical line, and we have four x plus five is greater than 17. So we'll subtract five from both sides. Five minus five is zero, so I have four x plus zero, or simply four x is greater than 17 minus five is 12. Divide both sides by that four, and we get x is greater than three. So here's our solution. X is less than two, or x is greater than three. Sketch our number lines, put zero near the middle. Here's two, here's three. Now I have x is less than two. So that's an open circle on that two. And it's pointing to x. So I'm with the little x's. Those are over here on the left. x is greater than three. Just greater than, not greater than or equal to. So that's an open circle. It opens to x. So I want the big values of x. Those are over here on the right. So with an or inequality, we just solve each half separately and put both of our solutions on the same number line. For an and inequality, we solve the whole thing all at once and we put both solutions on the same number line, but we darken where they overlap. Just the overlap is where our answer is. Now, there are a couple of special cases. Okay, one special case is or if you have an or inequality, if you have an or inequality and the whole number line ends up getting shaded, your answer is all real numbers, okay? All the way from the far left to the far right. If I have x is greater than or equal to negative two, it's a closed circle on negative two and shade to the right. And less than negative, excuse me, less than three, that's a closed circle or an open circle on three, shading to the left. That's the entire graph. The whole thing is shaded, that means our answer is all the numbers on this number line. That's all real numbers. The other possibility is you can have an and inequality with no overlap. And if you have an and inequality with no overlap, so for instance, you have four is less than x is less than one, that means you would have an open circle on four, shade to the right, open circle on one, shade to the left. But with an and inequality, you want to darken where they overlap and there is no overlap. So if an and inequality has no overlap, your answer is no solution. Okay, now, we have a couple of fresh examples here. One of which is fourteen is less than three x plus two is less than two. So this is an and inequality, and we need to solve it by doing the same thing to all three sides. So vertical lines. Start by subtracting two from all three sides. And we would have 12 is less than, three X is less than zero. Now, divide all three sides by three. 12 divided by three is four. Three divided by three is one. So one X or simply X 
and zero divided by three is zero. Now guys, zero is a number. So just because it's part of your answer doesn't mean you did anything wrong. That zero is a perfectly good answer. But now we try to graph it. Okay, so number line, zero. And I have four is less than x. So here's four, open circle, shade to the right. The inequality opens to x, so I'm with the big x's. Those are on the right. x is less than zero. Just less than, not less than or equal to. So open circle on zero. Inequality points to x, so I want the little x's. Those are over here on the left. Now, with an and inequality, they need to overlap. These two do not overlap, which means there is no solution to this inequality. And this is your answer. On those previous ones, all of our graphs worked out the way they were supposed to. But this graph has no overlap. That's how we know it's no solution. And unfortunately, there's no real way to know that you have no solution until you go to the graph. Okay, let's look at another one. So example six, let's see, we have two y is greater than y minus three or three y is less than y plus six. Okay, so with an or inequality, we solve each half separately and we put both graphs, both solutions on the same graph. So vertical line, I'll subtract y from each side to get all of my y's on one side. y minus y is zero, cancels, so I have zero minus three or negative three. Two y minus y is one y or simply y. That one's solved pretty quickly. y is greater than three, negative three. Next up, I have three y is less than y plus six. So, vertical line. I need to move all of my y's onto one side. So I'll subtract y from each side. y minus y is zero, so I have zero plus six, or simply six. Three y minus y is two y. So 2y is less than 6. Divide both sides by 2, and I have y is less than 3. So our solution here is y is greater than negative 3, or y is less than positive 3. Now if we put both of these on the same number line, Okay, so start with this. Y is greater than negative three. So that's an open circle on negative three and shade to the right. And Y is less than three. So that's an open circle on three and shade to the left. Now with an or inequality, we don't have to worry about overlap. Okay, we just put them both on the same number line. And if it's true for one of them, it's good for the whole answer. Well, we ended up shading this entire number line. And if you have an or inequality where the entire number line gets shaded, your answer is all real numbers. And this goofy looking R with the double vertical line is real numbers. That's any number you can possibly imagine. This is our answer here. So with an and inequality, we solve the whole thing simultaneously, all three sides all at once. Put both of your solutions on the same number line, lightly, and where those solutions overlap, that's your answer. So that's where we darken the shade. With an or inequality, we solve each one separately. Put both of our graphs on the same number line, and that's it. Okay, we don't have to worry about an overlap with an or. If you have an and inequality with no overlap, there's no solution. And if you have an or inequality where the whole number line gets shaded, that's all real numbers. Okay guys, if you have any questions, please make sure you contact me, make sure you get those questions answered.